Hello, I'm Tom from Cell. Uh, you are listening to Shutter 60 Magazine. So let's start a little bit with a little band history. Like, how did the four of you kind of first get together, and how did the band first take formation? Okay, uh, well, Charlie, uh, a guitarist and singer, and I uh, had kind of been in bands together since we were um, probably about 16. Uh, we, met, we met around that time um, and sort of realized we were both into the same kind of, the same, the same kind of, um, music uh, and we were both learning instruments so we decided we would get together then uh, and we were in various um, various bands uh, to uh, sort of generally sort of went nowhere uh, and then when we, we both went to uni and then sort of came back uh, around the same time and decided we wanted to do it a bit more seriously um, so we got uh, Tim on board uh, and uh, we ended up making a record um, with a band called Husk, uh, which was Seven Pyramids, and that dropped in 2013. Uh, and then, kind of as, as things went on, um, we got hold of our bassist, our current bassist, Kynan, uh, and uh, yeah, it sort of went uh, went from there. Uh, and then eventually, we decided we sort of wanted to step away from um, kind of dry, sort of retro doom sound which Husk was doing at the time uh, and when we so we sort of dissolved that um, and from the ashes came sale which started in 2016 with the release of uh, Slumber Song uh, and since then we've been uh, we put out um, a couple of singles for that uh, but we put the, put the album out in 2016 and we put a single out uh, last year and then we put a single out uh, last month Right. Now, did you guys come from a musical family? Did you have formal training? Or did you just kind of always been involved in music? How did you kind of first get started? Okay, uh, so I don't think any of us, apart from Tim, uh, did really. Um, Tim, uh, Tim, Tim came from quite a musical family, uh, and uh, our guitarist and singer, um, he, yeah, he came from quite a musical background, uh, and he... Um, He's kind of our, our theory guy. Uh, he can tell you sort of what time uh, the ins and outs of the time signature and the key and everything that. Uh, everything is. Okay. Uh, and when he when he writes songs, um, it's very obvious that he comes from that kind of discipline. Um, so he did. Uh, the rest of us, um, our parents really enjoyed music, uh, but couldn't play anything. Uh, so I, I um, it was it was only Tim really. So let's talk about uh, your latest single, Mannequin, that came out. How did that song kind of come together, and how does the writing process kind of work within the band? Okay, uh, so that one in particular, um, I, guess, I guess, like, um, talking generally, uh, sure. it's probably a good way to start about the uh, writing process. Um, so we will either, um, sometimes one of us will... Uh, have an idea um, or sort of um, a lot of sort of fleshed out ideas and we'll bring something a bit more sort of fully formed uh, to the table. Um, quite often quite often that happens and we'll sort of go from there. Uh, we, I think the last two singles were like that. Um, what happens more frequently is that we'll have sort of disparate ideas um, and we'll bring them together. Um, we'll sort of bring them and go, I don't know really where this is going to go. Um, but I, I, I had this sort of cool idea, and then we'll sort of jam it out together. Um, what happened with Mannequin was uh, Tim had written it. I think t uh, Mannequin was the second song that we had written uh, as a group um, after the release of the single. So we've had, uh, sorry, after the release of the album. Okay. Um, so we've had it kind of uh, in the bank for quite a long time. We've had it in the bank since about sort of 2017, I want to say. Um, and we occasionally sort of play the live, but not sort of. Um, to um, uh, recording it. Uh, so with that one, um, Tim had an idea and I mean, he wanted to write about, um, and he pretty much more or less had the structure and the riffs and the main parts and sort of where the, where the vocals would come in. Uh, and we sort of polished it off uh, as a unit. Uh, and I remember it coming together pretty quickly because we sort of had everything pretty much in, uh, in order. Nice. Now, what about the video? Because that's kind of a cool thing that you did, um, having kind of friends film themselves and putting that all together into a video format. Okay, so um, we had we had something else planned. Um, obviously, uh, with lockdown and everything, right. we had to postpone doing that. 
Um, but we, uh, with this one, um, we sort of sat down and went, okay, we can't do that, but that's maybe not such, um, that maybe isn't so terrible because what we can do is, um, I think it was uh, Kyle and our bassist uh, and his wife who sort of um, were sort of chatting and they came up with the idea of um, uh, putting that together. Um, so yeah, the, the idea was we just sort of, um, it was a way of catching up with our friends and also uh, acknowledging a lot of the people who were, um, who we met over our, our band journey. Uh, you know, we had a couple of bands in there who we'd um, even toured with, um, or we'd done a lot of shows with. So um, uh, Alex from Cybernetic Witch Cops in there, uh, Adam from Borg Tong is in there, um, uh, oh, Max from Otters in there as well. Um, so that was really cool. So it was really nice to, um, you know, whenever I, uh, whenever I uh, listen to an album, um, it's always cool to see where people have um, collaborated or they've had uh, guest appearances. Um, so it was really cool for us to have um, people who are like very very close to us uh, appear appear on the record. Uh, sorry, appear on the uh, appear on the, uh, the video. Now, um, I saw on your I think it was your Facebook page that you were having a live performance last week, uh, kind of an outdoor thing. Um, did that happen? And if so, how did it uh, go down? And was it great to get out there and play again? Uh, yeah, it, it went really well. We played uh, we played a show. Um, there's a local venue or two us called Be Cobblestone in uh, Bridgewater, which is a couple of times over from where our sort of main base is. Um, and we um, they have a beer garden. And they've got the um, they've got the setup where they can do it safely, um, which I think a lot of pubs probably um, probably wouldn't. Um, so they're very lucky to have that um, that setup. Uh, so it was um, indoors. Is, when indoors performances start again it's going to be a lot different I don't think anywhere in the UK is doing that at the moment I don't think that's um, right should shut down at the moment um, but the outdoors one um, yeah uh, so it's, um, it was set up um, everybody sort of sat on tables which were sort of distance from the other tables and people were distant uh, on those um, in, in those areas um, so it was very sort of uh, polite well behaved for, for a metal show <laughs> It was really good. Um, it was out of our comfort zone a bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, it was really good to see people uh, we hadn't seen for ages. It was really good to play. Um, we've had a few practices now, uh, writing some new stuff. Um, but it was really good to sort of go out and um, uh, go back to the thing we enjoy doing the most. Prior to the pandemic and COVID and the lockdowns, what was the local music scene like in, in the area where you, you're you at right now? Okay. Um, so we're in the, we're in the southwest of England. Um, okay. So we are, sorry. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're in the southwest of England. Um, so we are, um, to give you an idea, uh, we are a few hours away from a few hours away from, about sort of four hours away from London. Um, in, our, in our local area, we the most, uh, the closest venue to us is Cobblestones, where we played the other day. Uh, and that's great. They've had, um, they've really sort of grown up in the past few years um, from having sort of local bands to uh, uh, really getting some, um, some quite big names. They had, uh, they had some of the misfits there a year or so ago. Um, they had, uh, had Cancer Bats. They had, um, I think Anvil played there. Um, so they're getting uh, they're getting bigger um, bigger names on the, on the international tours, which is really exciting. Um, I, I would say uh, it's um, it's getting there. Uh, I think um, we were seeing places like that starting to starting to open. There's a few um, and sort of for uh, before lockdown, um, new places would um, kind of pop open ever so often. Would start sort of experiment with doing shows. Um, and what was really cool is that um, when we were younger, uh, we'd obviously try and do shows sort of wherever we could. Um, and, you know, we'd, um, there, was, there was an art gallery near us that would, um, was amenable, amenable to um, putting on shows. We, we worked with them for a few. Um, and what we're seeing now is a kind of, now we're sort of in our, our late 20s. Um, it's really cool to see a younger generation of um, people who are sort of in their early 20s or sort of late teens putting on shows wherever they can. Um, we, we played a couple uh, with them. It was really nice. It was, it was nice to sort of. Um, it's nice that there is uh, constantly um, new groups of people popping up who are a key to sort of keep that keep that spirit alive. 
nice. Now, one thing that's happening here in the states in some areas, um, and it, it hasn't been popular here since, oh boy, since uh, I was a kid, so a long time ago, we'll just leave it at that, is um, drive-in theaters and the whole idea of drive-in concerts. Is anything like that happening in the UK or have you heard anything about that? Uh, I I feel like I feel like that isn't although I haven't heard of it. Um, yeah, I, I I've not heard of anything happening like that. Um, I think that's probably something people would experiment with. Um, I don't know if we had sort of a culture for sort of driving theaters. Um, right. Uh, at the time, I'm, I'm not really sure. I've not I've not heard of. Uh, heard of anything um i know um, i think gary newman was meant to be doing something like that but i don't know if that was in the uk or, or abroad um but yeah i think um, i think it's something quite interesting um i i don't know where you would do it um i think um yeah i i i i not i've not heard of anything um, I just bring it up because I, to me, it's such an interesting idea because uh, when I was a child, obviously driving theaters here was a normal thing. Now there's hardly any of them left across the country. But the idea of people kind of being able to distance from each other in their cars and kind of pulling up and viewing a concert um on a stage and everybody's obviously in their own vehicle so it's their own little kind of bubble you would say it kind of intrigues me so i'm curious as to see where that's going to go um and it may be a way to get uh, a few bigger shows happening um you know around the world um where right now everything's shut down so that was just a curiosity question i hope you don't mind me asking that now what about um, the band's influences? Who would you say are some of the band's biggest influences overall and for you personally? Okay, uh, I would say um, overall, uh, bands like uh, Mastodon, uh, Baroness are a big one, um, Torch, uh, Torch um, Red Fang are another really big one. Um, I think bands like... Um, uh, bands like that. I think the um, Kai Lesser, um sort of um, uh, 2000s American wave of um, slush metal. Okay. Uh, they were huge for us when we when we started. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of cool stuff like that happening in the UK. But I think um, around the time we started, that kind of thing was uh, a modern thing that was happening. Um, that really sort of grabbed all of us, uh, and so it's something that. Um, uh, united our kind of disparate tastes into wanting to create something that um, used those kind of influences. Uh, I think I say other than that, um, a, a lot of the sort of um, like kind of easygoing kind of classic rock. Um, we, we all sort of grew up listening to that, and that's a that's been a thread, especially on sort of long uh, long road trips. Um, that's been a big thing um, for us. Uh, I think. Uh, a lot of synth-based music as well. We've sort of brought some of that in recently. Um, a lot of kind of 80s uh, synth pop. Um, that's that's been a big influence uh, for us as well. Um, I also think, uh, other than that, uh, Thin Lizzy are a huge one for the guitars. Um, they were a huge influence for uh, both Tim and Charlie. Uh, uh, and I would say, um, for me personally, I'm trying to think. Uh, um, I've been uh, leaning more and more towards um, drummers who are sort of a little bit more kind of out there. Um, so I really like uh, this band called Three Truck Tigers, who have um, whose uh, drummer Adrian Betts is kind of really all over the place. He's um, he's very exciting. Uh, he uses a lot of experiment. Um, uh, electronic samples as well, which he then um, triggers through um, pads he's got sort of built into his kit. Um, Zach Hill from Death Grips, um, I cannot remember his name, but the chap from uh, Lightning Bolt I've listened to a lot recently. Um, so I'm sort of, um, I'm sort of uh, taking some time to explore um, a few sort of more uh, out there influences. But I'd say my biggest influence probably is Brandon Dela from Bastard. 
Nice, thanks, very nice. And um, are you guys working on more new music and in the hopes of releasing some new things? Uh, yeah, we'll be, um, we are currently, uh, we're currently looking at some options to head back into the studio to record another, another thing for um, the not too distant future. Uh, and then after that, we will be looking at doing a another album. Um, so we, we've got we've got some ideas to kind of. Tie. Um, I think we, what we did. Uh, so we, we've got a lot of stuff um, kind of in the works. Uh, I think what we did, um, having put put a, an album out before, um, and between us, like quite a few albums, um, we we know that uh, it takes a long time from even you know being in the studio not even having uh, it at the writing stage um to being in the studio to actually like putting an album out sure. um if you've got to sort of um coordinate with uh, record labels and artists and so on and uh, video makers um so we are planning on having sort of going into sort of working on that but having um, before that sort of a buffer so there's something out um so it doesn't feel so long between releases Excuse me. Now, the question I wanted to kind of um, end with is, what is one thing that you would want people to know about the band? For somebody who's never heard your music, never heard of you guys before, what would be the one thing you would want them to know? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think I think the one thing we're really trying to put across. Um, is uh, we want our, we want everything we put out um, to just kind of be really approachable and fun. Um, that's that's why that's, that was the idea behind the the dog photo shoot. Uh, that was the idea behind um, some more stuff we've got coming out. Uh, that was the idea behind uh, um, you know like getting back into doing concerts because there are ways to reconnect the audience. That was the idea behind um, uh, doing the. Uh, doing a music video where we had everyone uh, come on board. Um, so yeah, I, I would say, like, uh, I, I would say, uh, you know, we're having we're having a good time because you're having a good time. I think that's, that's uh, one of the things we would really want to get across. Awesome. Awesome. And that's important, that, that connection. And um, I hope that everybody can get back to live music sooner rather than later so we can all get back to uh, yeah. enjoying what we love to do. 